Hi everyone, East Coast Reefer here, and today is tank move day. I'm gonna try and record it. I don't know how successful it's gonna be because I'm kind of gonna be concentrating on that. Definitely be voiced over, um, apart from this bit, obviously. Uh, but just wanted to take you through what I've done to prepare. So I've got lots of empty salt buckets kind of stacked up here, ready for transporting coral and uh, livestock. I've got 50 litres of fresh salt water made up ready. Um, I've got 10 litres of RO there. I've got another RO running at the moment. And I've probably got five litres of RO left in the reservoir there. What else have I got? Easy one to forget. Got two of these to sit the glass on so that you're not resting on the bulkhead connectors on the bottom. When, uh, when it's not on the cabinet. Um, I also have a couple of these dollies for moving it round. Uh, I've got a whole load of empty containers to move the, the water out of the tank. And I've got four of these little uh, suction grippy things. Not sure if I, how much I trust them. I might just put my hands around the tank. Don't know yet. Um, yeah, and I've got my dad come to help me because it's a work day, so getting help moving the tank's a little bit of a nightmare. Um, I think that's about it. So what I'll do now is I'll put the mic down and then I'll start shutting down this tank, filling, ah, oh, that was the other thing, this massive great container here. Um, Lee, the one-armed reefer, shout out to Lee, recommended these to me. I think it was 80 pounds, it's like 200 litre food safe water container thing. Um, yeah, so I can transfer all of the livestock into that while I dismantle the tank, rebuild it, refill it, and then I can move the livestock separately. I think I've covered everything. If not, I'll talk about it in the voiceover and I'll get cracking. So if only we did work this fast, I was just shutting everything down and uh, taking the media out of the sump there, putting it into that container ready whilst all the water is emptying out and then getting some of the loose coral and, and rocks out of the top tank and moving them over as well as the, the water fills up and trying to, it's a bit like Tetris, trying to get everything to kind of line up and not touch each other and not sting each other and yeah, so I managed to fill that in um, and then the fish were much easier to catch with no rock in there as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I had any problems with, with any of the fish really, um, trying to catch them. You see we're almost empty there. Just catching the last few fish and then rummaging round in the gravel to get all of the Nessarius snails and Trochus snails and everything that were in there. And while I was doing that, I gave the gravel a really good mix around to get all the crap, or, or most of the crap, out of it. And then I'm just hand scooping it into a bucket, but keeping it damp to keep all the, the bacteria alive in it. Um, I wanted to make sure I didn't cause issues with having too much crap, like that brown sludgy water. But I also wanted to make sure that I brought some of the beneficial bacteria with me. Uh, so then I just uh, yeah, used the little uh, TMC reef pump compact, I think it was called, to get as much of the water out as I could. <clears throat> and then I'd bought myself a little uh, Karcher wet vac, which was fantastic. Although I fit the little bag inside it and that bag filled up with liquid very, very quickly. So I'd recommend running it without the bag. And there we are just taking some of the... Uh, last liquid out of the sump, getting everything ready, then vacuuming out all of the crap and the crud from the tank, and then the same out of the sump. It was a really good opportunity to give it a good clear out. And then probably the, the ch most challenging bit was the uh, just disconnecting everything, undoing all the cable ties for all of the apex and the controllers and the reef dose and the DOS and the skimmer and all of that. And then I tried to pull out the sump with the equipment in to make it just easier to move around uh, but that meant threading all around a lot and uh, as you've seen on a few 
uh, times already here. Every time I once I've bent over a few times, uh, there was a bit of a, an opportunity to park your bike. So I did uh, did put a little cover over that, a little bit of a humorous one. There you go, uh, just to uh, save you from that mental image. And just yeah, like I say, just moving all those cables. That was just a nightmare to to clear all of those out. And then we're we're kind of getting to the point where the tank's pretty much disconnected. Uh, I left the two Neros stuck on the side, and we moved the tank out a bit, and I had to hoover out the weir box at the back. This was when we had the issues with the bag inside keep filling up, so it took a few attempts to get it to work, but we finally got there, and then I was able to kind of release the tank from the the base and just move it over a little bit. I'd already set the pieces of wood in the back of my car to to balance them on so it wasn't resting on the bulkhead connector and then we just took the cabin out as well and then here we are doing it all in reverse basically setting up where I am now and uh, yeah bringing in all the water because I decanted as much of the water as I could I think I threw out 25 litres of water and then it's just a case of threading it all back up and because this was the day before we moved and the, the, they were kind enough to let us move all this in early I had to just get it in and operational. I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I couldn't get the Apex connected or anything like that. But I got it basically working. And one of the things I really noticed, and probably people have asked me what I would do differently, this is probably one of the biggest ones, um, is keeping the water warmer. You see, they're probably one of the most critical steps of setting up a tank, making sure the thing's level. Um, so yeah, I. I put some water in it to make it settle a little bit, made sure it was all level, and then yeah, f put some more water in, and started to put rock and coral and and everything in. Um, and it, at this point, this is when I noticed that my hands are getting quite cold doing this, so the water must be pretty cold. So I had to dig out the heater and hook that in. And uh, yeah, here we are with it it pretty much up and running now. I was just checking for leaks here, and then. This is it, two hours later, the previous owner sent me this footage to show me how it was settling in. And here we are, it's all set in, it's been two weeks near, two weeks tomorrow since we got the keys and, and moved in. Um, had a lot of challenges that set me back a little bit, but the tank's in, it's looking fantastic. Um, everything is, is looking pretty healthy, you know, the Duncan's probably looking better than it ever has. That fish is going in the fish trap hopefully sometime soon because it's eating my gonny and my um, button scollies. Uh, what have we got? We've got my tracky there. You can see the gonnies, that one there. It's been munching on that one over the back. Um, if the clownfish gets out of the way, that one over the back has been munched on quite a bit. The others are okay. Uh, now this alveopora, this is how I noticed because it was out lovely, it was really extended. And then every now and then I'd look and it, all of the polyps would be completely in. And uh, it got me wondering what was going on, why was it like that? And then I caught that fella having a nip at them. So yeah, he's, he's gonna go and find a new home. Uh, what else have we got going on here? I've, I've mounted... Uh, one of the old acans that I was growing out, I kept the, the last bit of it. And then there's another ac acorn, a can I got from Reef Exotics over the back there. I got my lepto, that's, that's looking all right. Um, got a Miyagi Tort and a Gold Cup, AAC Gold Cup I think it's called, um, next to the Barley Slimer. Strawberry shortcake's coming out quite nicely. Um, this random one at the back that Matt gave me a frag of. Um, it's actually looking like it might be my Aggie Tor as well. Now it's starting to colour up. Um, getting control of the nutrients a little bit more in this tank as well now. Then my kind of euphilia garden at the back there. That's, that's looking quite nice. 
torches are looking good. Uh, the mushrooms that are coming out a lot and this Lobo is surviving. It's got some damage that was on it that I didn't notice when I first got it. That's starting to heal up now. And then I've got a couple of button scollies here. I've got another gonny that the fish have managed to tip over, but I think the fox face has almost finished eating that anyway. Got my two plate coral skeletons down there, just in case they ever pop off any babies. And then my frag rack's just kind of slung in the corner at the moment. But I've got a couple of very funky looking mushrooms growing on there. Um, I think as for fish, everything's pretty as it was before, with the exception of my tamarind wrasse. Um, and it likes to go to bed early. And it's 8pm now, just gone. And I think it's already asleep, so can't show you that. I have noticed the um, mandarin, that's what it is. The mandarin has uh, been out a lot more just recently. And then you can see the oh, Ceratopora caliendrum has almost completely finished migrating the zooxanthellae to the tips and is now in the process of migrating the zooxanthellae into the sump. Um, I that was like the last one that um, was damaged in the end of the year bacteria bloom that I got um, it just was not happy and it's just gradually stripped more and more and more it just amazes me that that strawberry shortcake next to it was completely fine strawberry shortcake you know renowned for being a little bit fragile serapora to caliandrum Renowned, renowned for being quite hardy, and uh, yeah, they behaved in in opposite ways. So, uh, what else have I got to report? Yes, I have my UV up and running now. Come on, lights turn on. They're not going to turn on. So there's my little bracket that I made, um, just to hold the the UV upright so that the air, all the air bulbs come out and, and are forced out the end. Um, I think that's that's about all I've got here. Big shout out to Dave, or just Dave, for uh, giving me a, a fleece roller to try. Um, he knows I'm a partial to an AliExpress knockoff, so giving those a try. Um, and the only other thing I'm doing at the moment is having arguments with my Trident. Uh, I was getting loads of test A fails, I'd stripped it all down, cleaned the lines, cleaned the manifold, the citric acid and everything and, and now I'm just, I've primed again, I'm now I'm getting test B failed so I might have to clean the hoses on reagent B and prime that again, see if I can get that up and running. Uh, bigger picture, longer term in this room I don't know if I can get it all in, but if I kind of come around here, I've put the tank here. Um, my desk was, if you've been on some of the lives that I've been on, the Reefy AF and that, my desk was up against that wall. Um, now, it was it kind of sucked because there's, there's a window here, um, and I couldn't see out the window because of all my monitors, but secondly, there's a radiator down the bottom, and it was absolutely cooking me. So I worked from home today and I, by the end of the day I was cooked. So the thinking is I've, I've moved it, when I, once I finish work I've moved my desk over to that wall. Um, it's nicer for the lives as well because the tank will be behind me. Um, but long term what I'm thinking of doing is putting a six foot tank along that wall. Um, yeah, when we're still doing a lot of building work and everything at the moment but the idea is do something to make that a feature wall and then six foot tank along there the desk will go where the tank currently is over here so that'll be behind again uh, thank you very much for watching it's been a bit of a longer video but I really wanted to take you on that journey of of me kind of moving the tank and detailing all the things that I did and hopefully the lessons I learned along the way Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, please like, subscribe, share, 
really struggling to get um, get the video to a lot of people. The the audience is dwindling a little bit. I don't know if it's just I'm getting crap at making videos, or if the algorithm is just not showing to people. But yeah, it'd be great if you can share them and and help me build the audience a little bit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video really soon.